<clears throat> Let me get a mouthful of nuts. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Put them in your mouth. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 51 of Another Woodshop Podcast. And if I set up the audio correctly, everyone should only be able to hear me. Yes, it's the Pete podcast. Get ready Welcome for Pete show. an hour and a half of just Pete and silence. Pete, Pete we basically, can't hear you. it's Pete. all downhill from here. Pete and silence. <laughs> Pete. Attorney at law. The uh, another Pete only podcast. Pops is what we call it for short. If you were That's in the all. pre show live, you know what we're talking about. We always yeah. ep open every episode with if you were in the pre show live, you'd get the next 12 minutes of jokes. We probably yeah, should work on that. I mean, that is basically the last, like, what? I mean, 20 that's episodes? incentive to <laughs> join us in the live. True. And, and True. guys, it was so awesome. This year, we had a bunch of our sponsors were actually in the pre show live. This right? year? This, this, this time, this episode. Yes, this, they like were. A this year. Yeah. A bunch of our sponsors because were in, the, in there. This, spon this episode, this sponsor is brought to you by this episode. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by our sponsors the patrons uh so this is the first official patron only episode uh what well, a, <laughs> a patron sponsored episode no but a huge 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 shout out to all of our patrons you help us uh keep the show going and if you would like to help True. support the show help us keep bringing you just wonderful audio issue prone content if you'd like to help us keep the lights on over here at AWG. keep the lights on <laughs> literally yeah because uh, uh, yeah, we appreciate it. You guys are great, and despite all the hiccups that we have, you guys are they're always there for us. And <laughs> calm down, Pete. No, what? Pete's they, very upset. There uh, was a there was a huge technical failure. I was, failure I was in the quite live. upset in the beginning. Pete was on the edge. The amount of supporting messages that I got, or supportive messages I got from uh, our patrons and other uh, you friends, you got some. I got some. People were like, "Hey, it's it's all good." I yeah, got a lot. Of, I got a lot of messages that said, "Fire Pete." Yeah, I, I got yeah, a bunch of just said it's okay if it's in a three-way call. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so yeah, huge shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, there's some there's some cool stuff coming down the line. So if you want to be the first to uh, potentially be in on it, you know, patreon.com slash another little shop podcast. AWP. Hey, we got some hey, new patrons too. We do. We have two new patrons. We, we got two new patrons. Uh, we're not sure if we mentioned Billy. You know what? I do remember mentioning Billy last week. That's fine. He's getting a double. Saying, okay, Billy, you're getting VIP patron. He deserves it. Uh, he does. Uh, and then we uh also knew the family is Ollie Boy Woodworks. <laughs> Did we also mention that? Who knows? We may or may not have gotten new patrons this week. Either way, we're really appreciative we of our did. patrons. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, I mean, you know, assuming anyone can hear us. Why don't we jump into what's on my bench? Mike, why don't you start okay. since you're talking? Oh, that's true. And Dan's eating nuts and playing uh, snake, I assume. Uh, I was <laughs> playing Tetris. I'm just joking. You were, you were you really I'm, playing Tetris? not making it no. any better. I'm responding. <clears throat> I'm responding? Did you just uh, die? So listen, this last seven days of my life have been very, very stressful. I... Uh, I can't go into some of the stuff, but some stuff at my work went down last week on Friday, right before we went into the show that made the last five days of my life very stressful at work. Uh, I can't really go into that. But um, on top of that, um, I'm working on this bench, which I'm in a hurry to finish up this weekend because that's my deadline is the end of the month. Uh, and that's this weekend. Uh, well, I think I have more time, but I actually haven't been communicated to. So um the bench I'm, is a, a copy of what you've already made, though, right? Correct. Same bench. Yeah, it's the same exact bench. I did change the dimensions of the seat. I made the seat wider or deeper, I guess I, I guess I should say. You have to modify the, the text in any way? Because I know you're trying to avoid some knots. Uh, I Did you have you not seen the stories? Probably I not. have not, no. I just The last I, I one I saw, already, you were trying to I, figure out what you were going to do. I, I ended up uh, not, uh, I just not, <laughs> no, I ended up change. I ended up, uh, I didn't take out any of the knots. My thought was to take a piece of redwood. Uh, I was going to take a two inch Forstner bit and drill down the knots and then make a two inch plug with my CNC and then plug it in there 
and then sand it down flush. But I'm very certain that the customer doesn't want the knots to go away. So I'm using the same text as the last, the same quote as the last bench. That's what they wanted last time. They wanted this time again. I ended up just manipulating the text around and fitting in around the knots. So uh, I did mess it up by like, 0.1 inches one of the letters goes into one of the knots like a tenth of an inch so i had to seal it up a little bit it's not a huge deal you're not gonna be able to notice it in the end product but i was trying to avoid it and i could have if i hadn't you're been just exhausted him? you should probably just throw that whole thing in the fire pit yeah i would i would start fresh because that slab wouldn't be so hard to redo but they literally have no more wood like i'm i'm using the bottom of the barrel they what, supply what all happened to all those stuff. slabs they aren't long enough because they're all like four foot six inches i need five foot because I cut them all down. Every, so if I had a nickel ones, for every time it wasn't long enough, I <laughs> the the other uh, the other slabs are also that you, all this. You're referencing the slabs that were at the place. Dan and Pete went went with me to pick up the original material. Yeah, and Dan lifted um, all of them by himself. Dan was so strong. He's so buff. Much um, strong. Much strong. Very impressed. He. Uh, but there were not. They were all too narrow. It would have been too narrow of a seat back. The ones that were left. So all the ones that were wide enough weren't long enough. Tail as old as time. But uh, I was able to get that worked out. Actually, I, I engraved them and the I did the epoxy inlay before the show, before we came in here. So I'm actually going to be doing the finish sanding, getting the seat on tomorrow and doing the glue up tomorrow. And I'm going to be spraying that thing Sunday. Uh, the other big news is I landed, well, I don't have the contract yet, but I landed like by far the largest job I've ever landed. And it is huge i can't go into many details it's significant it's a very big project um and it's a big it's big for my um for my for coffee custom builds so uh it's a commercial job and i'm really proud of it i put a lot of work, a lot of work into it over the last week and a half and um i have to coordinate subs and it's going to be a it's going to be a big step forward for me so i'm really excited about that i'd go into more of what it is but there's no details yet. That's part of the whole thing is that I don't even know I'm building a table. That's all I know. I have no details on size, uh, base. I have heard rumors that it's going to be a live edge waterfall and that's all the details I have so far. So, um, that's all the information I have. Um, I also had, uh, more people are buying those Imperial conversion charts, uh, which is awesome. I've got like 10 on back order right now. I was supposed to get the material today, but because of all the snowstorm stuff that was happening in Texas, the material was delayed. I'm not getting it till Wednesday now, which really sucks because I was hoping to cut them this weekend. Um, cause I got, like I said, 10 orders that I need to get out. Uh, but as soon as those come in, I'm going to cut all of them up because I'm going to be done with this bench this weekend. I'm going to take kind of two weeks off of, uh, commissions and not work on anything, but for stuff in my shop. And then I got some, I want to actually try to knock out, knock out our bed. And I want to get those out and get kind of caught up in things before I jump into the next commission, which is a dining table and a coffee table and another coffee table. So <clears throat> I'm just going to try to take a couple weeks off because I'm actually ahead of schedule with this bench right now. Try, try to take advantage of that. Um, and then I think that's it. I had some charcuterie boards get ordered this week on Etsy. Just uh, got a lawyer this week. Um just kind of trying to kind of up in the things over with coffee custom builds, getting kind of systems in place. I looked at a project management app called Jobber. Um, I'm really tempted to pull the trigger on that because uh, I think it's going to help me a lot. I'm having trouble keeping up with a lot of things right now. And uh, I'm just balancing a lot of plates <clears throat> and it's a hundred dollars a month, which sounds like a really lot pricey. It does. But when you think about what it does, uh, it saves, it could save me a lot of time. If it can save me two hours a month, it's worth, it's worth it to me. Cause I mean, I don't want to go into what I bill, but if it saves, if it saves me one hour a month, it actually is worth it to me. So um, anyway, but it, what it does, Dan is when, if I have a link, like on my Instagram or on my website, customer can go there, they can fill out a form, they can fill out, say, Hey, I'm looking for this. It'll actually create uh, a customer request and then I can go in there and hit a button and turn it into a quote. And then I can turn that request into a quote with their, with their specifications. And then that quote can go to them and then they can approve it. And that turns it into a job. And then with the push of a button after I'm done with the job, it'll turn that into an invoice and then send it to them. So it's like, I don't have to do any data entry really. Dope. So administrative, like saving, I don't want to deal with administrative stuff all day long. 
that's not what I'm here. I'm not doing woodworking to be into administrative stuff. So if there's a program that can do it for me, time is money. Amen. So to I got to figure out, I got to figure out if that's a value. So I got to figure those things out. There's other options out there too. Uh, but anyway, I won't go into that. Uh, Dan, what about you? What about me? What about what Dan? About Bob? <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> it's I love movie. that movie. Um, <laughs> you'll be shocked to know that I've been continually working on the Tetris giant ridiculous bookshelf. I'm actually starting to put the finishing touches on it. I started spraying it with lacquer this evening nice. after some hiccups this morning. So <laughs> over the last several weeks, we've gotten a, a ton of snow in here in Nebraska. How much did you get? Is, oh, more than I care to care about just a lot 200 inches sure 200 one inch sounds about right Seven thousand. so somewhere between <laughs> one inch and Seven thousand inches, inches. <laughs> but anyways we we've gotten a lot of snow i think we've we've gotten more snow uh than we have since 2015 or something like that and it's been really nice here the last several weeks no, not weeks, several days. <laughs> Sorry, timelines are tough. Uh, it's been really nice here the last several days, and it's all starting to melt. And it's melting very rapidly, which is creating like a huge mud pit in my yard. So mm. if you follow me, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I like to let my dog out and he he hangs out in the shop with me. Who let the dogs Who let out? the dogs out? Oh, Pete, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you get me. You get this is why we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> let's well, turn off I, the show this that's ruined I, now we both said it at the same time i, I thought you so were friends three, because one of you two, paid one, one record <laughs> anyway Dan's mad i'm super he's gonna throw this podcast angry, on the ground right? <laughs> i threw it on the i'm sorry threw it on uh, the where was i oh you were oh, saying uh, the mud pit yes mud pit. my yard no, is a mud pit so uh, I was I was in my shop this morning. I was prepped to start spraying lacquer on the Tetris bookshelf, the first part of it. And my dog's outside. He's you know playing with his toy. He's coming back and forth, and he brings his toy inside and he shakes it with his head really hard, and it just like slings mud everywhere. And I was like, oh my god, are you kidding me? So I had to wipe it down and re-sand it because he got mud all over the thing. Oh man. <laughs> it took me like two hours. And as I was like getting ready to to spray it some more, he was like flinging mud and water and all kinds of stuff. Like every time he walked by it, he didn't even have to shake. Just like whenever he walked by it, it just like seemed to like. Could you get control of your me. dog? I will cut you. Please, <laughs> please. <laughs> That's another joke. Uh, well, let's go into that. Yeah. Uh, no, we don't need to go into that. It's no, so we're going into it because sure. I'm, okay. I'm still sure. angry. I'm still angry. <laughs> someone got done lapped. In real life. Oh, someone totally got done lapped in my neighborhood. If you, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I let Max like run in my yard, and he's a very good dog, and he he comes he comes and goes, and he he stays in the yard. Some dude who I've never seen before in my neighborhood, Mike is totally like not into the story because he's yawning. But some no, dude I'm I've so never, tired, man. I'm sorry. I love this some story. dude I've I never. Was, seen I was telling Jackson before. about it earlier. Some dude I've never seen before in our neighborhood is walking down the sidewalk. I have this all on video because, you know, if you're going to break into my shop, I got you on video, dude. <laughs> he, uh, like, Max runs out to the sidewalk, and he, he's going to greet him. And the dude is, like, petrified. He's got, <laughs> he's got a giant stick in his hand. So Max is all about sticks and, and things. So he sees the stick and he's like, Oh, you, you, you're my friend. So he, he like runs up to the dude and the dude is petrified. And I'm like, don't worry. He's fine. And, uh, I yell for Max and Max comes back to me immediately. And the guy continues to walk down the sidewalk and he, and he goes, why don't you get control of your dog? <laughs> I went, what? And he goes, why don't you get control of your dog, please? <laughs> 
<laughs> I responded with, why don't you bleep off, please? And he kept going. Which and then Dan off. killed him. <laughs> He's never he been heard from again. He didn't, he didn't bleep off as far as I know. He just kept walking. Also, I mean, like, I'll, I stand by my statement. Who in this day and age walks down a street on a sidewalk? Come on, it's 2021, yeah, man. True. Like, what are you, a psychopath? Why are you walking down somebody's street? Walk. He was in this he guy was also with his legs. In, he was also in shorts and boots. Uh, oh, you can't trust that. him. No. That's like sandals boots and the fur and, and, and socks. It's just uh and I will <laughs> add that Max came to me as soon as I said his name. So you did not that I have control of my dog control. or anything. I don't have any control of my dog. Anyways, I forget where I was going. Yes, the uh <laughs> Tetris bookshelf <laughs> is getting lacquer on it. And I spoke to my client, uh, a different client this morning. And so I'm like, I'm doing this like whole basement remodel thing. I'm doing trim in the basement. I'm doing a floating desk. I'm doing a bar and some upper cabinets for the bar. I'm doing two Murphy doors for it. They called me this morning. They told me that they got uh, some carpet being laid sometime in april so i got a hard deadline for that so the the rush is kind of on it do doesn't about sound that, it doesn't sound like you know it's that far away but it, it's it's certainly closer than it's a lot I of work would man. like so yeah you're gonna blink and it's done and it's here yeah, yeah right anyway i can't believe I'm, how fast this year is going it's march on monday <laughs> i know oh god <laughs> oh <laughs> Or is that oh, on top of that, on top of that, <clears throat> yeah, March I need Monday. to build a bed out of cherry. I win. I and we all know we you were, can't build no we a bed out of cherry in May in. or March, whatever. whatever. Is that a is that a thing? Is that like yeah? Uh, it's because of the lunar after eclipse, Labor Day kind of thing. Uh, white after Labor Day, same thing. Yep. Some yeah. <laughs> anyway. Pete, what you got going on? Oh, what do I got? You you say? Uh, it's a good thing I made a list because I don't remember. Uh, to, I actually had a pretty busy week, but it was uh, most of it was spent out of the shop. I I've been tuning my CNC because I, I I did finally do some maintenance. I've had it for over a year. I've never really maintained it. I haven't tightened up any belts or anything like that. So I put in a little work on that. And this week I've been making a bunch of trays. I have tons of little offcuts, uh, just little Dunlap size pieces of wood on the shelf. And I started just throwing it in a CNC, making trays and just, you know, selling them, giving them away as gifts. I also, and this is going to come as a shock. I hope everyone's sitting. One sitting. I'll give you a second. Okay. I finished a bunch of cutting boards. So I had some, um, <laughs> some bare naked cutting boards on the shelf and some that I had to just refinish. Cause I guess uh, I thought they were cured and I stacked them. And then wherever they were touching another board, they got shiny and everything else was kind of matted a little bit more. So I had to clean that up, threw them up all on Etsy. I got some sales, which is really nice. I made some other C or uh, 3d printed stuff to throw up on the website as well. I'm starting on a, uh, a cherry shelf, like a corner shelf. So it's like a quarter circle with some supports. It can be two, maybe three tier. I still got to talk to the client. It's my mom. She, she wanted one. Client. <laughs> my client I'm doing charity work. The roommates. <laughs> Room <laughs> <laughs> <My> roommates. <laughs> my roommates. Um, aside client. from that, I, oh. Emma got her YouTube channel up and running this week. I've been, I on subscribe. her about i appreciate you she I has been, more videos up than you that this is it's an attack, <laughs> and you're right i mean i can't even be mad but it was actually it was a lot i've of been fun. riding her about getting one not like this <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's what's really nice is you know we're both kind of uh you know we're both trying we're both selling something and what we do so uh she's starting to see the value of like a youtube instagram all that stuff. So uh, I've been working with her and she decided to start a channel. I helped her. She did the editing. I did some thumbnail stuff. Mike, you're right. Making thumbnails in Canva is a lot of fun, especially when you get to do, fun. do the uh, remove background thing. Uh, I know Dan's been having a lot of fun in Canva. So I uh, <laughs> worked on that and she's pushing me to get my video out. So I've been, I actually did a little bit of editing on mine this week. I really hope to have that thing out soon because I'm just, 
I'm getting annoyed with myself, but um, that's about it. Just, you know, got to get that YouTube video out and make some more content. Uh, oh, and I've been spending a lot of time in Clubhouse, which is a new app. And if you really want to learn about it, please bing it because it's just too much to go Stop. into. But it's another platform, but I spent a lot of time in there this week talking to other makers. Uh, Dan hopped in there a, a bunch. Uh, Mike hopped in, in a little bit. So check it out. Hit me up on Clubhouse. Uh, but that's all I got for this week. Should we do questions? I forgot to mention that I made some magnetic bottle openers. Ooh, nice. So, and I'm suing. Exciting. <laughs> oh, you're suing? <laughs> I'm suing you, yeah. No, those look okay. really good. You did a good job. They were just offcuts from that that uh, They're fun Tetris to make. I like me. making them. Like, sometimes I'll just knock some out and keep them in, like, an inventory. I haven't sold one in a long time. It seemed like so a good them. a good use for the offcuts that I had instead yeah. of, like, throwing them in the burn pile. Yeah. Make Anytime something. I have a, a an ugly side on one of the mini boards, or if I have, like, a check on one side, yeah, it's, it's now a bottle opener. Like a Czech C Z E C H Czech Republic. Like like the Republic. Yeah. Hello. That's what I yeah, look, it says You want hello. bottle opener? <laughs> it's in, got magnets. <laughs> in mother Czech Republic, a bottle opens you. <laughs> uh, foo fighters. Foo. All right. So this first question <laughs> is from Adam Barnett. We're going into questions early. This is gonna be a quick episode, boys. Let's do, it. Let's do this thing. Adam Barnett, America. Hey guys, Adam here from Barnett Custom Woodworks. So I was talking to someone on Instagram and they mentioned uh, oh my that they had to tell a customer not to put a cutting board in the freezer. And it reminded me of a time that I had to tell a customer that they cannot microwave wooden epoxy coasters. Uh, <laughs> so I was wondering, what's the craziest thing that you guys have had to tell a customer not to do with one of your products? All right, can't wait to hear the stories. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Dan, would you have to tell them not to put in their body? <laughs> I don't have any stories to go along with that. I have had customers uh, reach out to me and say, well, one customer in particular comes to mind. They were telling me that the, 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 the cutting board like swelled and, and cracked and all this other stuff. It was like, Wait a minute! I told you, I told you specifically, not to put it in the days? dishwasher. Oh, it was. Uh, oh, it was a while back. It's a while back. Yeah, I told you specifically not to put it in the dishwasher because or to everything throw it on the he ground. told me, everything he told me, sounded like they put it in the dishwasher, right? And then the, they let it dry out. He's like, "Well, I don't know. let me talk to my wife and see what happened," and. Lo and behold, he talked to his wife, and his wife put it in the dishwasher. I've never had anybody put a, a cutting board in the freezer. I, That's pretty dumb. I they probably believe in magic. <laughs> I, I, I got I'm trying nothing. to imagine what scenario it was where that was appropriate. Like, was did they have something on it, and they wanted to just put it in there? They were making a ice charcuterie board. I okay. wish this was warmer. <laughs> this is a pretty nice security board, but it's pretty cold. I got nothing. It? Pete? Oh. I I mean, I think it's just been like either don't put it in a dishwasher, which is kind of a standard thing you have to say or put it in your paperwork, uh, or don't put like super hot items on this. Because I made some noodle boards, which are the like the stovetop thing covers. And I'd be like, don't put like a hot pot on this thing because it'll ruin it. Um, of course, I've I've heard of at least one person putting one on one of my boards too. So that's, I didn't think I had to uh, actually specify that. But yeah, I guess, you know, if it's coming right off a of flame, you shouldn't be going on a cutting board, people. Come on. But I don't really have a crazy story. Not like that. He's, I mean, he's got his beat, I think, with the, those two stories. Fridge? Those and what was the second one freezer a, and microwave a freezer and microwave yeah the microwave coasters that i don't even know why 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 mike why i ain't got anything that's crazy that, I mean, you got us beat that's the craziest thing yeah that's a good one it's a good one you beat us i hope you're happy adam this next one is from <laughs> your last hop. voicemail ever yeah you're not going to be on this show again just kidding please call us next week this next one's from kevin hop 
Hey, it's Kevin from Hopper's Woodworking in Saskatoon. And Saskatoon. my question is about shop upgrades, but more specifically, sander upgrades. I do a lot of one-off and custom builds and currently have the typical DeWalt random orbital sander. I just found the Diablo mesh paper and thought that was a game changer. So what's the next game changer? Do I go with a belt disc combo or a drum sander or maybe a Merca or Fest tool? I'm wanting to stay under a thousand and hopefully be able to add an air scrubber as well. Curious to hear your thoughts and great job on the podcast, guys. Keep it up. Pete. Uh, I mean, I'd say a, a really good sander and a some kind of dust extractor, not a dust collector, but some kind of vacuum style device that lets you control the speed uh, and also turns on while you're working on it. So like the Festool CT or mini series, um, Merca makes that. A vacuum as well and there's some other brands i think triton makes some as well maybe some other brand it's like orange um that and a good sander will legitimately save you hours and hours of time in the shop and probably just your lungs because it collects dust really really well uh, ever since i got my vacuum for the the Merca sander like i don't even like there's no dust in my shop when i sand what about you, Mike? Uh, I mean, I would say a good random orbit sander. I mean, I, I had the, uh, you know, one of those r- roughly $100 random orbit sanders for about a year. And getting a nice sander was really like, whoa, this is this is a huge time saver for something that I don't like doing. So um, I think, you know, we all kind of joke that it actually makes it enjoyable. I don't know that it actually makes it enjoyable. It does make it far less horrible to have yeah. a good sander. I mean, sanding is, some people do like sanding. I'm, I don't like sanding, but when you have, when you have to do something, I mean, you have to sand, you're not going to get away from sanding um, unless you do like a smoothing plane or whatever, but um, you're going to have to sand more than likely. And if you have a tool that makes something that's genu- generally kind of horrible, not so bad, that in and of itself is kind of a win. So um, a good sander really goes a long distance. Obviously we're fans of Merca's here. Uh, but there are other good brands out there. So um, just spending the money on that tool is is worth the money. Um, and getting an air scrubber. I think air scrubbers are really important because these new tool systems have really good dust extraction. Uh, these higher end things have dust extraction, but that, there is still, I mean, go a week without blowing out or cleaning off your shop. There is a layer of dust over stuff. Those, those, uh, those air scrubbers will help a lot. They'll help pull stuff out of the air. I try to run mine whenever I'm doing any of my, um, you know, volatile compound sanding. Whenever I'm got, anytime I got like fine air in the dust, that stuff's going to go in your lungs if you're not wearing a dust mask. But if you've got the air scrubber, it's going to help a lot. So I would definitely say a nice random orbit sander and an air scrubber. You're probably going to be spending pretty close to a thousand dollars though. I know you said you want to go under a thousand, but you might have to break that budget by a hundred bucks or so. Dan? 100% 100% agree with everything that these guys said. The Merca Sander system is phenomenal. And I'm yeah, not just saying that because they're sponsors of the show. Right. It, they are fantastic. They collect dust. They do an amazing job at sanding. I mean, I've cut my sanding time in more than half, I think, on bigger projects. They are just fantastic. And the yeah. dust collection on them is amazing and mike is right you know you should be more concerned about the the dust you can't see right so that's what a good air scrubber is gonna is gonna you know it's gonna benefit you quite a bit and i think a thousand dollar budget is gonna be a little tough now to address another thing you said is a should you get a drum sander I think that's a I think that's a game changer. If it you is. can if you can swing it, if you can get a good drum sander, that is going to open up a lot of like opportunities for you and other things. Mm-hmm. It's going to it's going to save you a lot of time. Yep. So, He's that's true. what I have to say. It's true. Um I tell no tales. <laughs> this next question is from a fine young gentleman named Lee Omen. 
Hey guys, Lee over at Regal Street Woodshop. Uh, just wondering if you guys had any tips or suggestions for somebody that wanted to open up an Etsy store. Um, anything and any tips you guys have, I'd greatly appreciate. Thanks, guys. Hit him, Pete. Well, uh, if you listen to all of our episodes in order, you'd probably get some great tips in there. But if you're too lazy to do that, Lee. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll tell you now. So, I mean, one of the biggest things you can do is be on Etsy. I see too many people that actually have Etsy listed in their profile when I click on their profile and there's nothing in your store. Constantly be adding stuff. And uh, Mike's been on Etsy all of what, like six months, eight months? I've been and on there for a year like, and a half, but it's been f- well, like, four, four or five have months you been, when you started being active. Yeah, like, it's yeah, been, like, it, like in October. Exactly. And I feel like you have a new item in there. Yeah, you have to uh, update like your store every often. week or two. And I've been trying yeah. to do that too. I've been trying to add some stuff, whether it's a variation of something I make or a new item. And I, I started taking a, a page out of Mike's book too, where he, he you've made some templates that were kind of one-off jobs, but could also relate to some other stuff. And you threw out the threw up the SVG and yeah. just sell yeah, the file. Can grab it, sell the file. And you probably gotten some sales, maybe not, but well, probably have, but you might eventually. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah, you go. I've sold, so I've sold files. I've sold like 30, uh, 20 files so far. Yeah. So the thing is, like, keep throwing stuff up there. I actually, you have to throw up some SVGs. I, I talked to Ben Myers uh, yesterday. I had a great conversation with him about how to uh, how he handles SVGs, uh, how profitable that's been for him. And I know that I've been making a mistake by not having him up there. But, anyways, the, the idea is if you're making something like I, a couple of weeks ago, I made just a bunch of templates of like a guitar pick so that people can pour resin over the top. It was for a client. She just needed five of them. I ended up cutting six out of the one sheet. So I have an extra. I took some photos, threw it up on Etsy. I sold one already. So nice. there's a need for it. You know, like it's template. People, if one person uh, needs it, someone else probably someone does. Someone else might need it. And because it's something that I can just cut out on a CNC or laser or 3D print, mm-hmm. it's another one of those items that's like, I can fulfill it pretty easily without really having put, to put in a lot of work. The so, other thing is, is people, when, they, when they're when they looking for odds and ends thing that they can't find at like a Target or wherever they shop, they usually shop at Etsy for Etsy. those kind of things because yeah. they're handmade. And they can find the, there's like an unending list of weird things that you can find on Etsy that, that are handmade. So yep. people are going to go there. So if you made something by hand and you think, and someone else ordered it, like I just said, someone else might want it. And then you find out you're probably the only guy making those things or selling them at least. And now you're the guy or gal. Yeah. You're the person who's now ma- who's supplying the world with that thing. There's only 500 people in the whole world who need it, but you're going to sell it to all of them. And that's a lot of sales for one person. You, you never know what might come from it. I've had people reach out to me through Etsy and be like, hey, I want to do a volume purchase of this. What would it cost? And I was like, what? what? They're like, what? I want this many hundred. And I'm like, okay, I'll need a few weeks, but yeah, I can do it. Uh, you know, all of those so far have fallen through, but they were legitimate inquiries. They were asking a lot of questions and like, they want to know if it could happen. So like, if one of those actually went through, you know, it could be a good thing. And it was something that I already make anyways. Now, something that's been working for me recently is anytime somebody wants like a one-off or something custom, I actually say, instead of doing Venmo or PayPal or whatever, I say, I'm going to list it on Etsy and go ahead and purchase it through there. Now, granted, they have to pay the taxes on top of it, which covers you on uh, sales tax. Uh, but it's first of all, it's tracked. Second of all, you're offered Etsy shipping. I shipped a fairly large sign for eight dollars. That Walnut epoxy sign that I made shipped eight it for dollars. Eight dollars and change, under nine dollars to ship that thing. I am eight dollars not- change eight ninety nine. Eight, yeah, eight yeah, dollars like- and change. 15 more dollars. <laughs> no, it was, change. <laughs> it was, it was under $9 to ship that thing. That's crazy. And it, as a two inch box by 24 inches by 17 or 18. What? Yes. Yes. Well, it wasn't super heavy. So I like, I was able to wrap it up like crazy, which was great because USPS damaged the hell out of the box. Luckily the sign was good. Yeah. So you can take advantage of Etsy shipping, which is a huge money saver. Mike, you know, cause you've shipped some larger stuff. Mm-hmm. And Etsy, most, Etsy, a lot of my uh, stuff is is larger for the most part. Yeah, and they, they're pretty good charge. shipping. So use that because not only that, but that you get an extra sale that counts, and it literally displays right at the top of your page. Um, 
you're likely to get a review, which I've gotten reviews off of most of the items that I've, I've done that way. And uh, the best part is sometimes they'll buy other stuff. Of the three or four times that I've done it, two of those people actually bought the item they wanted and a couple of other items. And I was like, oh, I was not expecting this. Here's an extra 20 bucks. Cool. I'll take it. So basically be active. It's like, think of it as another social media. You want to keep posting stuff on there. Keep adding things in there. I took Dan's thing because he's mad now. Um, should I send it to Dan? I'll send it to Dan. Dan, what do you got on Etsy? I don't have a whole lot to add, but treat Etsy like another social media. You took the, the words you out of post, my mouth. The more attention you'll get. <laughs> I was sitting on that answer. I'm for like so ever. sorry, man. I know that's you always your one thing you had. Of a but here's the thing, that's Dan, you're perfect. No, no, that's not all you got. I'm perfect. Yeah, no, no. You can just leave Retract it. Retract that. That's not all you, you got. There. Dan, you had uh, an Etsy account uh, starting when? Like two months ago? Three months ago? Like right at the holiday like peak, I think. Yeah. So before that holiday season, you've gotten what? how many sales on Etsy? Zero, right? Before zero? the holiday season, I didn't have an account. So yeah, yeah. zero. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you'd say roughly zero. Okay. Um, how many like, sales have you gotten ballpark since then? Uh, 30. Uh, so, so tens of sales, tens of sales, but that's the thing that's Good. sales you would have not gotten, whether you sell yeah, for one sure. thing a month or 30 things in a week, it's sales. It's just another medium. And guess yeah. what? Unlike Facebook marketplace, no one's going to haggle you on the price. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. that's the, that's the huge thing for me. I cannot stand the Facebook marketplace because of the haggling. Look, if you want to haggle, I get it. I'm I'm a fan of haggling. Whenever I buy things, I like to haggle. That's like the my favorite thing with buying a new car. I love to haggle. I will haggle all day. Don't you pay more for the new one? What are you talking? I'll about? ask Kayla later. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, I paid a little more. It's a little bit, little more BA. It's a trail boss. I get it. It's a trail boss. But uh, uh, what what was I going to say before Pete rudely cut me off? I forget. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you don't have to haggle on Etsy. You you list the price, and if people want it, you know they'll they'll buy it. If they don't, they'll they'll go on to the next person, which is a huge thing for me. I don't have time to deal with Etsy, so. Like I started my Etsy uh, around the holidays. I had a lull in in uh, customer uh, commissions, so I took a bunch of my my offcuts and my scraps or whatever quote unquote scraps, and I turned them into cutting boards and what have you. And I made a bunch of Etsy sales. Etsy's great. That's all I got to add. Yeah. Mike, uh, I think Mark really already nice went. Pictures. I didn't go. Uh, take oh. really nice pic. Take really nice mm -hmm. pictures. Uh, that is the first thing people see. Uh, titles are very important. There is a spot for tags. Use those tags and tag the name of your shop in those tags. Uh, because if people search Coffee Custom Builds, they it doesn't bring up Coffee Custom Builds in the first link, first set of links. You'll have to scroll down and then it'll say Shop Owners, and then it has Coffee Custom Builds. But if you put coffee custom builds in the tags, it comes up and lists all of my items when you type in coffee custom builds or coffee or coffee custom. So you, I, I was going to ask I you do that. that do you do of multiple of them, yeah. right? I do coffee, coffee custom, coffee builds, coffee custom builds in all of my listings. See, all that's smart. I did. I Since you said anytime that, I updated a bunch coffee, of my listings. Yeah. Anytime I say, and then um, I've also do like marketing research where I'm going through and looking at, I went through like two nights ago. And I was like, man, I haven't sold any bottle openers since I've had my Etsy on here. We were talking about body, bottle openers. Um, my name was atrocious. I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't like magnetic bottle opener. Ooh. It was something dumb. Dude, so, I just searched my name, just just Petri. And uh, now all the literally all the items I hashtagged last night just came up instantly. Yep, Usually it's like, instantly. don't know what you want. You want a tree or the letter mm -hmm. P? Because we you have want both. A P? Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, you, you really want to put those tags in there. It helps a lot. So those are the kind of the big things to get going that I learned. I learned a lot of this stuff from Jeff and, and Jess over at Two Moose. They helped me a lot. So one F nosy. Um, though, uh, yeah. Uh, my joke I always make is when he was born, uh, there was no Fs given. So they only gave him one F. 
But anyway. That's great. Uh, Tell time joke. But, <laughs> ten if Dan was here, he'd yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then make sure your shipping times are up to date. And um, if you have, if you have an issue with a customer, uh, do everything you can reasonably to make sure they're happy. If there's a mistake or something, you know, you can't be really control. You can't control the shipping. I mean, you need to get it shipped out on time, but when things go wrong, you just need to be understanding. You just can't be like, not my problem. I didn't, I'm not the United States. Post. <laughs> you need to be like, I know this is frustrating. I actually can't control this, but I understand your frustration on this and I'll, I'll keep inquiring and try to help get this figured out. So, and if you do genuinely make a mistake, do what you would want to have done if you made if that mistake was made to you. So what? I have one last thing, and that is oh. add some flair to your packaging. Make it stand out. I use white boxes on purpose. I can get brown boxes real cheap. I pay for the white boxes, and they're they just like when you get a, a white box in your mail, like it's not a brown standard box that kind of sticks out. Not only mm-hmm. that. All, every single one of my, pa- my packages, whether it's an envelope or a box, gets a, your order is here with my logo on it. And I get at least like, I'll get roughly about between one and five of those stories every week of someone like tagging me that they got my package. Just like zooming so, in on that little sticker that says like, your order is here with my logo on it. White's better than brown? Okay, Oof. well, moving on. So moving I'm going to clip, I'm going to uh, cut this I'm out. looking at my- uh, Hashtag Nebraska. Uh, nope. <laughs> I'm looking at my my <laughs> store right now, and I'm look. I can see three, four. There's actually five listings that have terrible pictures that I need to update. So I'm I'm actually really not happy with five of them. Just looking at it right now. Um. So I need to do that soon. But uh, you know, make sure those pictures are good. Make sure the title makes sense. It doesn't need to. Remember, you're dealing with customers. Some people don't know what walnut is when they're looking oh, for so a walnut tray. Brown wood dark wood tray you need to remember yeah (laughs) you need to remember who your audience is when you're doing that that has to do with content too that just works across anything time you're making something for someone who isn't yourself and you want it to reach the most people i don't want to say dumb it down but dumb it down dumb it down so um that's the best advice we can give i think uh this oh dan why don't you uh why don't you do the, the giveaway since we're halfway through? Can you do that now, or you got a whole mouthful of nuts right now? I got a whole mouthful of nuts, but I can do it. <laughs> cool. Well, nothing stopped you before. I'm going to actually uh, mute myself because I'm going to start eating some ice, and that'd be really annoying to hear. Do the giveaway. All right. So, last week, Macbeth sponsored giveaway. We gave away a Starbond package, and that went to. Hung, hung over at Wiley's Woodworks. Congratulations, Love hung. hung. He's a good dude. This week, we had a whole lot of giveaways going on because of the 50th episode. Please forgive me. I got a mouthful of nuts. Like Mike said. <laughs> <laughs> so, we also gave away two $50 gift cards to Macbeth Hardwood. In the live show. In the live show, Mm -hmm. which was a bit of a train wreck. But if you were in there, (laughs) you heard that we gave it away to uh, number one, which was Nick Fouts and John Grubb. Congratulations to those guys. This week, we are giving away an Odie's package, which consists of... Hold on, I'm pulling it up. Odie's Dark uh, and the Wood Butter Dark. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Odie's Dark and Odie's Dark Butter. Thank you to Macbeth Hardwood for sponsoring yet another giveaway. Thank you very and much. I had a code word phrase written down, but I can't find it. Chat room only fans. That's all I've yes, got. That that was it. Was it? <laughs> Chat room only. <laughs> That's a that's a throwback to our 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 failed live show. Our failed live show. <laughs> our still born like, live show. Our our pre-show live sh- pre pre-show live show. Show 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 pre-show live show. Pre-live show show. <laughs> yes. It, it was it very kinda, show show. It kind of failed a little bit, but people stuck around in the chat. So to make fun of us. That make fun of me. Phrase 
is uh, kind of a throwback to that. So, Mike, would you say that code, code phrase again? It's a uh, chat room only fans. Chat room only fans. If I was trying to get entered, where would I send that, Dan? You would send that to us to us in an email at awpgiveaway at gmail dot com. Where wouldn't that, please? I send that? <laughs> What's that? Where wouldn't I send that? Because people wouldn't keep send sending it, it to the wrong you email. Would not you would not send that to another woodshop podcast at gmail.com. Do not send that there. Do not send it. That's where you send your questions. You want to send the code phrase to AWP giveaway at gmail.com. Otherwise it won't be counted. And if you, in case you don't know how to say that or spell that it's in the show notes. There you go. So check them out. Boom. Shakalaka. On to the show. Okay. Uh, This next question is from Moses Cho. Or is it Chosis Mo? Chosis Mo. Hey, guys. It's Moses with Chosen Craft Co. Big congrats to your 50th last week. And congrats to your 51st this week. And so my question is, what's up with the 52nd? Are you guys (laughs) doing something special for your first year anniversary? Or is it going to be one of those... How are you sponsored episodes? <laughs> just kidding. I love all your episodes. Um, yeah, I was just curious. Thanks, guys. I mean, this is kind of an all of us answer. We, you know, we don't know what to do, right? <laughs> I mean, yep. does, it, does anyone else care about 52? I mean, it seems like 52 I mean, doesn't mean anything, but a year. We, is we per- were excited for like the year. 52. Right. So weeks I, I think the thing is. Year. 52 episodes for a lot of podcasts doesn't mean a year because they're not as consistent as us, yeah. nor are they as good. Um, Ooh. I'm, just joking. I'm just joking. Uh, but the, the 52 doesn't necessarily mean a year for a lot of podcasts, but for us, it does mean a year. because A year. Yeah. Yep. That's, we've been doing 52 We actually went straight. back and forth on how we were going to celebrate that. We almost celebrated the year instead of 50. Yeah. And everyone was yeah, like, so, why would you do that? Yeah, 50 <laughs> makes more sense to the, like we were just saying, when you're making stuff for other people, think about the people who are consuming it more than yourself. So that was kind of our thought. But we will make a big deal. I mean, a year is a big deal. I mean, we it's we are proud deal. of that, and we're we're gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna forget about that next episode. I've had to deal I with probably, you guys for a year. I I've prob- known Dan a year. We should <laughs> we should probably figure something out next week. We can't be giving away like piles of shirts again. Or I'm already we? broke. We talked about this. We can. Kayla! Probably- Kayla, we Debit could card. probably we could <laughs> we could probably give away an AWP shirt in the live, and then we'll throw an extra. You guys want to throw an extra AWP shirt in the? Well, we'll do it next week. We'll deal with it next week because that's going to be the actual one year anniversary. So, um, what, Pete? What do you think? AWP hat, the but the good ones. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-uh. Organic craft. Oh, we can get a we can get one made from there. Yeah, I'd have to. Th- do we have those set up? No, I, I can Man, make. We anything need those happen. hats. I want to get one of those hats. I, I want one. I, I don't know why we haven't done it yet. Like, yeah, it's why happening. haven't we done that? Let's order us all hats. Okay. Dan wants one. I I'll and then let's one. let's do an extra hat just, next week. I just for, ordered uh, one from from him, like a second one, because I started getting uh, Dunlap stains on mine. Yeah, I had a couple Ooh, orders for those this week. I had to get them in. So. You can see my Dunlap stains. Well, right here. listen, listen. Let's not figure this out here. I don't know why. It's I'm because doing that. I Let, work. We'll let you guys. We're doing it live. I need to find my text from Dan saying that I just slept 19 of the last 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, let's figure this out, but it, we'll, we'll give something away for the one year anniversary for sure. A little extra on top. For so. shizzle, my nizzles. For shizzle, for shizzle, my chisels. You want to um, record that part? What? I said, Dan, do you want to re record that part? For shizzle, nope. my chisel. What are you eating now? He's like got lasagna. What the heck? <laughs> What's he got? What are you eating, Is that Dan? Sardines? Olives. He's just slamming olives. Dan. <laughs> All right. I love you. Oh, oh God. All right. Nick <laughs> Pachia. <laughs> Come on, Nick. Nick Pachia's question. All right, Nick. Hey guys, Nick from the Working Green. Uh, so this week I got a little bit of sad news to share. Believe it or not, I have never cut dados before. Um, I'm putting together an entryway bench for a client of mine. It's going to have some cubby space, and I'm going the birch plywood route. Uh, a friend of mine recommended white side bits um, using their dado bit for the router. Um, 
but I was just wondering if you guys had any preference between using the bit in the router table or a dado stack in the table saw, um, or if you know of any advantages or disadvantages to using one over the other. Thanks, guys. I love that white side plywood dado router bit set. It is sick. It works really good. It's not perfectly tight because plywood does variate in sizes and stuff, Very but it neat. is tight. And you can. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking. The same thing. Is that not a word? There, no. I don't think variates a word. Hold on. It can be. It's variation. Oh, he's gonna look it up now. He's gonna be. Let it. me Google this variate. Right now. Another random form of variable. Variate is a word. So Whatever. you guys feel pretty stupid like right it. now. Uh, noun variate plural of variate. Tell me, I I feel stupid. Look at, as he eats like nine olives. <laughs> Who's stupid now? <laughs> <laughs> No, um, it's not perfect, but they do work really well. And if it's a little bit loose, it's never really loose. But if it's a little bit loose, a little extra glue ain't gonna hurt it. So just fill that thing with glue, and that wet that wet glue will uh, what? Dan? Like there's a joke in there somewhere. There is. There's so many jokes um, in there. Um, but the other side of that coin is if you've got to do like twenty dados, you don't want to do it on a router bit. It's gonna be true, so true, much true. faster on the table saw, like just way faster. <laughs> But setting up the the router table dado bit is really quick compared to setting up a dado stack. So if you've got like, I usually kind of go around 10. If I got more than 10, I'm setting up the stack. So, and if you got, well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Dan. 100% agree. That white side router bit uh, dado bit, bit, bit is amazing. And it, it, nine nine times out of ten, it's gonna it's gonna fit perfectly, even though it, like Mike says, uh, <laughs> plywood variates. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of variate. There's a lot of variate. Shin. Sometimes there's up to four variates per. But sheet. it's it's like dead on. Most of the time. But yeah. if, if you're going to do like a ton of that same thing, Mike is 100% correct. Get your dado stack set in and dialed in and use that as I swing my fork around. Um, All of fork. I really, I really can't like, like, I really can't add on to what Mike said other than I agree with him. Pete, <laughs> do you have anything to add? Yeah, I disagree. Oof. Yeah, no, I, I think it. Listen, yes, the data router bits are nice. Uh, the one, the white side set that you guys are talking about, I don't own it, but I've seen w- the way they cut. There's like other ones out there. It doesn't have to yeah, be the white it doesn't side have to one. Be. But they have yeah, to be yeah. plywood dado sets to actually fit a da- uh, plywood piece in there. Perfect. Those are great. But if you're cutting dados for custom size pieces, you're probably going to have to play around with the size anyways or run it multiple times through that. I will give you one reason for why you should always go to the data stack, and that is dust collection. Because when you're running a data through a router table, it's just shooting that sawdust out the side. Don't you have dust collection for your router table? I do. I, I don't have Yeah, but if you're here. running a... I have it over the top. I don't have it through the cabinet. So hmm. for me, it doesn't... Seems like a failure up. on your part. Well, maybe, but well, most people so- don't have that. Dan, I'm sorry. <laughs> what is your router table like? Oh, you don't have one. Okay, I'm just gonna keep talking. Then. Cool. So, so. <laughs> yeah, it, as far as dust collection, I have one tomorrow. Now, I agree with them. Yes, it's that if you're gonna do a couple router tables, fine. But if you're gonna do a whole ton of them, set up the data stack. It's worth it. It's also a much cheaper option to do a router table. So I get it. But you're gonna have you to just pay with cleanup. All the juice? <sighs> Next question. Well, also, I mean, with the dado on the router bit. If you have dust collection through the cabinet, if you don't, yeah, it's going to get messy. But if you have it through the cabinet, the dust doesn't have anywhere to go. It goes into that cabinet and will get pulled down. But when you get through the end, sometimes it will shoot off the back. So you can get that. But yeah, I mean, if you're talking about saving a few minutes uh, without swapping out a dado bit, I mean, a mess is kind of whatever. But it is a factor to think of for sure. Pete's 100% right. Uh, Tyler Isaacs, he has this to say. Hey guys, Tyler Isaacs here, Wooden Whiskers Trading Company. So I recently ran into an issue where I was doing a glue up using some Type Bond 2 and uh, got it in some crevices more than I wanted and uh, 
I've been struggling to get it out or I'm not affecting the base foot. You got any tips for next time? Thanks. Dan, I don't know what he's talking about. Can you enlighten me? A little bit. Uh, <clears throat> I love me some tight bond. Don't get me wrong. But that tight bond too is crazy yellow. And one of the reasons why I will often like choose to use Gorilla Wood Glue is because it will cure. Glue doesn't dry, first of all. It cures. It will cure clear as opposed to that yellow Taibon 2. I will not argue the strength of Taibon 2 or 3 or the original. I will argue the fact that it cures not clear that might be the problem that you're facing use a wood glue that will cure clear i will say that tight bond speed set cures clear and so does their quick and thick so try that next time pete what do you think uh what was the question i was typing notes damn it pete i'm sorry <laughs> well i know it was about a glue up but we'll, no what was the question i'm, I'm Legit question. I legit don't know the question. I don't know what he means. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to visualize. It's getting in crevices. He's he he got tight bond two, which is super yellow, into mm -hmm. crevices, and he's having trouble getting it out. What crevices? What does that mean? Like, I mean, you can get in there with like a chisel or a blade and try to clean it out. Like, if it's, I'm assuming it's a 90 degree or something like I'm that. I'm assuming that, and I'm also assuming that he got it into like some some pores of the wood. Well, maybe, he's having yeah. trouble getting rid of the look. I've seen people use like tape on the joint on both sides. And like when it joins up, it just goes all over the tape and you peel it off. Oh yeah. I've seen uh, uh, Jeff and Jess over at two moose do that. Yeah. My favorite trick is books. the, uh, the straw. So you just get it like a regular party straw that's mm -hmm. flexible that. and you just stick it into the corner and just, it scoops up the glue. And you, once you fill it up, you cut off a little bit with the scissors and then just keep going until you clean up the whole thing. That works really well. Um, and that's it. That's 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 the tip. I've I done got. something like that with uh, the Tetris, the Tetris bookshelf I'm working mm. on. I didn't use the straw. However, I didn't smear the glue around. And I waited for about 30 minutes or so for it to tack up a little bit. And then I used like a card scraper, the perfect 90 degree corner of the card scraper and scraped it out of there. Good call. You could do something like that. Mike, I still don't have any idea what we're talking about. So uh, <laughs> basically, I, how, do you, how do you prevent squeeze out? glue squeeze out in tight spaces or awkward oh, spaces? Oh, I just tape it. I just tape those joints. And then uh, one thing I really like, well, with Type Bond three, this works. I, I've never actually used Type Bond two, the non-brown Type Bond two. I really like the Type Bond two brown on walnut and and darker woods. It is really nice. But I've never used Type Bond two. But the Type Bond three, um is i mean i don't, don't really see my glue joints because my joints are really good <laughs> um <laughs> weird flex but, okay. <laughs> but um but i'll do the tape up at the joint which is honestly it's a pain in the neck procedure but man does it make that final process so nice when you when it's dry and you just pull that tape off and the joint is so clean oh, man it's really nice but it's like uh it's like setting up for painting you know like 90% yes. of it's set up, you know, it's just sucks. But once you get it done and you pull that tape off and that joint's like perfectly clean, it makes it worth it. Um, another thing is with type bond three, if you're using type on three, which I know he said he was using two, if you put type on three on and wait, it has to be almost exactly 45 minutes. If you hit that with a dumpy chisel, it's at like this perfect point where the, the type on three will come off and not leave any residue behind it's like almost perfectly tacky and you hit it with that dumpy chisel and it won't because it's not it's not cured to the wood yet it's not going to tear out any fibers it will separate it's almost almost like a gel or that is however goo. humidity specific so yes. if you're in arizona that's like 20 minutes yeah it could dry faster for sure yeah so um 45 right. minutes. if you hit it at the right time it just comes it just like peels up yeah, it's like a, yeah. you can almost like grab one side and pull it and up. And it like peels as a string almost. Yeah. 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 So that's that's one way to do it. Um, 
sometimes you kind of have to do the like wet towel thing and, and that usually ends up just smearing glue everywhere i don't really like that method a lot of people will do that but i don't like that method um but yeah in tight crevices and stuff like a hard i guess if you had like a 60 degree joint or something and you had to get in there that'd be a pain in the neck i mean uh the tape thing's really going to save you a ton of time on that joint in my opinion mm-hmm. um let me get on to the next question here that was it i'm just that kidding it, <laughs> we're done with the question was that it? Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. it yeah we're Good done lord why don't we hop out of this one because no one's gonna listen to this one i mean after no, what happened the live show plus episode 51 comfortable with my jar of olives should we just listen to lonely island some more and then blast it into the podcast well, <laughs> get hey, taken down patrons will get to listen to that <laughs> will we not get sued Is that we will 100 percent get sued let's not do that let's not do that yeah well uh big thanks to our patrons yeah, Big huge thank thanks to, to our patrons. Yeah, the biggest of thanks. You guys, especially are you. You know who you are. You know, you're the you, one. You're the one. Wait. You're the. You're literally the reason we're able to stay afloat. You. All the exactly. other ones are cool, you but and you're you, the you best alone. one. Like, yeah, like those were getting us to like just above water. Like you helped us get over the, the top. Jeez, thank you. Uh, okay, Pete took it too far. Look, oh look, Pete <laughs> took it too far. Everyone's surprised. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, big thanks to everyone. Uh, we will be back next week. And we would like to say thank you for everyone who shares the show. That really, really does help a lot. Keeping the show alive in the social medias. Is that a thing people say, social medias? Keeping the show active and alive and out there really helps keep the show going. So keep sharing the show. You guys do so much. We yeah, we seriously. aren't always the best about sharing it on the podcast account, but we are, we do I try feel to like share I'm, it. I'm our, being attacked right now. You're 100% being attacked. Uh, the, the, we do all personally share it on our pages every time. So we really appreciate you guys doing that. Um, so thank you so much for that. Uh, keep giving us those reviews. I actually don't know where we're at on reviews. Maybe Pete can pull it up real quick and give us a quick. Uh, sure. I'll bang it. I'm going to guess 185 five-star reviews. Um, what Dan? <laughs> Why is Dan Chase said bang it again? I'm just oh god, I'm over that joke. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's not a joke. <laughs> Superior, he's being it right engine. now. Um, what, what else we, we got going on? We should, uh, we should do a final check. Do we have any gift cards to give away? Just want to make sure. Oh, yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> I listened to that today. You, I was like, had oh, me, you had me scared for like a nanosecond there. <laughs> <laughs> we we did that right. Um, uh, all right. Well, let's uh, I guess we could, wait. What is Pete pulling it up for reals? Trying, I think it is. But oh, I yeah. can't. Well, then no, I'll just his, stall for a minute. His no, band is, is about as good as our audio. In the <laughs> I'm, well, I'm in the po- podcast app, so I don't think it's a podcast app. Oh, so you didn't bang it? That didn't. I don't. I don't actually thing. bang it. No. I want to give a huge I shout out and a thank you to everybody who hung out with us in the pre-show today, tonight, yeah, that was this fun. evening. Uh, we had some Pete technical was on, difficulties. Pete was all. I wasn't upset. gonna throw. I wasn't gonna throw Pete under the bus. But I was he very screwed upset. Everything up. Well, I hate when audio doesn't work. It just it's. You know. <laughs> Don't do that, Dan. He's already like pissed off. Don't We're do at 184 reviews. All I five said 183. Star. You, you said 185 off, actually. Oh, did I? Uh, yeah, you were real I close. Idiot. I wasn't even. Wow. Close. But anyways, uh, sorry about the technical difficulties this evening. But you know, we'll be back in full force next yeah, week. This Dan, it's fine. Dan headed max and that just makes the whole it caused thing. like a uh a waterfall of a butterfly electricity butterfly it went and through it, a transformer it, in texas it went from nebraska new jersey. to new jersey it was crazy it was via magical. texas thanks texas. anyways don't mess with texas or whatever <laughs> uh all right well let's call this episode good yeah. or serviceable you guys We'll talk Good to you serviceable. <laughs> Good enough for government work. This episode work. was serviceable. This episode is an episode. This sure was an episode. Sure uh, was. <laughs> let's get out of here. Come on, this is ridiculous. Okay, bye now. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 Love you long time. <laughs> <laughs>